are interaction. As I told you from the beginning, dynamics, there occurs an interaction between drug and receptor, and that is what changes internal environment. The change is nothing but conformational change. See, as a numerically measured here, proteins and proteins have got different conformations, are sizes and shapes are there. This is very important aspect. You know, conformational change, if you remember, uh, we read about lock and key model. When you read about enzymes, you, have, you might have studied about lock and key model, right? Uh, the enzyme will be like this, lock, and a particular agent which has got exact coplanarity will go and bind with it, and then you will get a particular action. So the receptor will act like a lock, and the molecule or ligand will act like a key, and then you have a particular action. This is called lock and key model. Lock and key model. Think about this. What happens if the if the lock shape is changed? The key cannot go and bind. This change is nothing but conformational change. Conformational change is very important. That is the reason why you know you know about insulin. Insulin is a protein. Insulin can be synthesized in the lab, but the same thing cannot be used in human body. The reason is conformation. Whenever the protein has got a preferred or a particular conformation, then only it can act as a drug or a, a effector molecule. If the shape is not there, it cannot act as a drug molecule. Insulin, even if you synthesize in the laboratory, you cannot get this particular conformation. That is the reason why it is synthesized either in bacteria by gene technology methods, gene recombinant technology methods, which is synthesized from lab. Bacteria and then it is used. Bacteria is a living organism which will give a particular size and shape that cannot be done in the laboratory. This is the importance of conformational change. I'll give you one more practical significance. What happens during fever? When you have fever, body temperature is increased, right? Temperature, heat, you are giving a particular amount of energy. What happens during that energy transfer of heat? The body enzymes, shapes will get changed. Once the shape is changed, they cannot perform normal functions. That is the reason why during fever we'll have a kind of indigestion. Food will not get digested. How food is getting digested? Food is getting digested with the help of digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes will have a particular shape, conformation. When temperature is increased, the normal body temperature is 98.4 degrees, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. When the temperature is increased to 100 and more than 100, the conformation changes. If the conformation is changed, what happens? Digestive enzymes will not work and digestion will not take place. That is the reason why during increase in elevated temperatures of fever, food will not be digested. Why? The conformation change. The moment you take a paracetamol, body temperature comes down, conformation will be normal, digestion will take place. But with continued fever, indigestion, the reason is conformation change. So this is the logic. Whenever there is an energy input is there, conformational change occurs. That is what our drugs does to, the, does to our internal environment. Now look at this. Now this conformational change, again, it will change the receptor conformation. Now receptors, according to receptor occupation theory, there is a theory which talks about, in order to show action, all the drugs need to occupy receptor in certain amount. So all the receptors should be occupied, and only they will show that action. This is called receptor occupation theory. Simple one. But receptors will exist in two different conformations. One is inactive one, one is active one. Conformations depending upon the size. See, one receptor will be in this shape, and the receptor will be in this shape. This one is an active one. This one is an inactive one. So receptor could exist in either form, inactive or active, depending upon the energy availability. You take a drug. If it is pushing the drug into this active form, it will show action, right? You take a drug. It will convert the receptor into active form. It will show action. Look at this. Look at the first one. L stands for ligand. You take the ligand is nothing but external drug. You take that one and RS stands for receptor in active form. RS stands for receptor in inactive form. So there exists an equilibrium between active and inactive form. You take it right, external ligand. It is turning this receptor into this active form. It shows action. It is called as a full agonist. Agonist is means it is showing action. So this is what is conformational changes. You take a drug, there exists an equilibrium between inactive form of receptor and active form of receptor. The drug will push all the receptors into active form that social action and it is called as full agonist. Second scenario. Look at the uh, next scenario. Now, in this next scenario, ligand is there. 
it is pushing the receptors in inactive as well as in active form but majority of the receptors will be in this active form minority of the receptor in this inactive form so it is not complete activation like this it is partial activation and those drugs are known as partial agonists understand the difference in full agonist all the receptor in active form partial agonist some of the receptor in active in active form but majority of the receptors in active form and the dissonance partial agonist semi so, it is not complete action it is partial action after that look at the next scenario now you have a ligand you have a receptor in active and inactive form imagine the ligand is converting in equal amounts of receptor in active form equal amounts in receptor in active form equal distribution is there you don't see any activity that is nothing but antagonist so you don't see any action because there is an equal distribution of active form and inactive form so that is what becomes antagonist the final one now see some ligands will completely turn the receptor into inactive form so look at this the ligand binds and receptors will be only in inactive form nothing is converted to active form these things are called as inverse agonist inverse agonist i'll repeat this again but understand the concept see drug receptor interaction the basic job is they will cause conformational change conformational change means the protein conformation changes the protein can have active conformation inactive conformation that is why proteins are called as dynamic proteins dynamic proteins means depending upon the external energy or temperature their conformation is changed they are not static they will not remain as such forever no when the body temperature is changed conformation changes when body ph is changed conformation changes when a drug binds conformation changes now we are looking about what happens with the drug binding conformation changes now receptor could exist in both the forms inactive form, sorry, inactive form and active form when the drug is completely positive to active form you will see an act, action so ligands which will push the receptors into active form will show activity called as full agonist so full full agonist job is they can they combine with the receptor and all the receptors will be converted into active form next one so some of the ligands will convert majority of the receptors into active form but some of the receptors will be in inactive form that is called partial agonist it is not full action it is partial because not all the receptors in the active state like this only some majority of the receptors are there but some of the receptors are still in inactive form last one next one antagonist equal distribution of active and inactive form this is what is antagonist no action remember that ligand or drug is binding with the receptor but there is no action and it is called as antagonist the last one inverse agonist so inverse agonist is a different concept you need to understand this there is a word word called as constitutive activity means it is not that always a receptor needs a ligand to bind with it to show action some of the receptors are always active without ligand binding that is called a ligand independent activity that means they do not need any external ligand external ligand or internal physiological molecule to bind with them and to cause activity they are always active i'll give you some of the examples during night times our heart rate is only 60 to 65 heart rate is reduced but during day time heart rate is always higher more than 75 something like that why heart rate is always higher certain amount of dopamine is continuously releasing and because of that heart rate is reduced when you are in awake state the activating neurotransmitter will be in high in amount they don't need any ligand to bind with it they are just active so this activity is called as constitutive activity like an independent activity examples are benzodiazepines dopamine bradykinin all of them they don't need all the time a ligand to activate them certain amount of activity is there now in such cases so receptors are always in this active form without ligand also when you take a ligand if the active form of receptor is converted to inactive form it is called inverse agonist that is what is this so this is only applicable to constitutive active receptors they are always in active form by taking a drug they are converted into inactive form hence they are known as inverse agonist we have carbolin class of drugs are there which will inactivate benzodiazepine receptor so this is how drug receptor interaction changes conformation and affects the